Next topic is linear graph. So linear graph is what you have learned already in high school. In grade 10, you learn about the equation y equals mx plus b. And in this equation, m is your slope, and then b is your y-intercept. And the example I gave you is y equals to 3 plus 8x. So 3 is your y-intercept, and then your 8 is your slope. What the slope 8 represents is that if you increase x by 1, your y will increase by 8. Example 2, graph the line 3x minus 5y equals to 25. So our first step is to convert the equation into y equals mx plus b. So if we convert that equation to y equals mx plus b, we're going to get y equals to 3 over 5x minus 5. So our y-intercept is negative 5, and then our slope is 3 over 5. So what the slope represents is that for every increase in x by 5, the y value will increase by 3. So once we understand what the equation y equals mx plus b is, then we can start graphing it. And when we're graphing it, the first thing that we graph is the y-intercept. Y-intercept is your coordinate 0, comma, negative 5, which is shown in the, in the graph. Once we have graphed the y-intercept, then we, we need to start graphing the slope. And the slope represents rise over run, so your slope is 3 over 5. And what that means, again, is that when we increase x by 5, y will increase by 3. So increase x by 5 means that we're moving to the right by 5, and then the y will go up by 3, so y will increase by 3. So for the x, the x goes from 0 to 5, we're moving to the right by 5, and for the y, y increased by 3, so y originally is negative 5, so with negative 5, you move up by 3, that will give you the negative 2, and that is your next coordinate. Your next coordinate is 5, comma, negative 2. So once you have those two coordinates, once you have the y-intercept and the next coordinate, then we can connect the dot, and then we extrapolate it. We extend the, the line, and then we're done. Example 3, problem-solving example. The Clarkson Soccer League has set a budget of $3,840 for soccer balls. High-quality game balls cost $36 each, while low-quality practice balls cost $20 each. If 160 balls are to be purchased, how many balls of each type can be purchased to exactly use up the budget amount? So first, we need to set up the two equations. So the first equation that we have is the 160. We have 160 balls, and there are two types of balls. High quality and low quality, H and L. So H plus L has to equal to 160. That's the first equation. Second equation is the budget amount, is the dollar amount, 3840. And we know that high quality is $36, low quality is $20. So the amount that we spent on the high quality is 36 times H. And the amount that we spent on the low quality is $20 times L. And when we add these two variables up, we're going to get 3840. So 3840 equals to 36H plus 20L. That is the second equation. Once we have the two equations and we have two unknowns, then we can solve for H and L by substitutions. So H equals to 160 minus L. We substitute that into the 3840 equations. So we have 3840 equals to 36 times bracket 160 minus L, close the bracket, plus 20L. And then we expand the bracket and you rearrange the algebra, you can do that on your own, you're going to get L equals to 120. Once we know that L is 120, we know that the lower quality ball, we have 120 of them, we can substitute that into the 160 equals to H plus L. So 160 minus the 120 gives you the high quality ball, high quality ball equals to 40. So we have 40 high quality balls and then 120 lower quality balls. And that is your answer.